Hello friends, welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator and another video. This is going to be a series of video tutorial about the PMDG 777. I intentionally waited just a little bit to record this tutorial due to the hype and the YouTube flooded with 777 videos, but I think it's time to start recording the first episode and this will be divided into maybe 6-7 even 10 episodes depends on how we progress but we will come we will discuss the the cabin layout the cockpit layout familiarize ourselves with the panels in the cockpit where the switches are do the preliminary cockpit inspection electrical power up pre-flight cdu programming and then pre-flight cockpit preparation from there, clearance, pushback, taxi, takeoff, climb, cruise, descent, approach, and land. And then obviously the shutdown procedure as well. I am planning to use Beyond ATC as the ATC source, but I don't think any of the offline ATC solutions provide ETOPS or Oceanic clearance functionality. Therefore, we will be missing out on that part. Hopefully, beyond ATC developers will add Oceanic clearance or an, and ETOPS operations in the feature. Anyway, without further ado, let's jump into the cockpit and start completing our preliminary cockpit inspection. Welcome to the flight deck of the beautiful PMDG Boeing 777. Everything looks absolutely great in this cockpit. And I can't just say enough about how good PMDG modeled this cockpit and how everything looks. I think this shows their dedication to creating exceptional flight simulation add-ons for the community. And we will start with discussing the cockpit layout and where everything is before attempting to do the preliminary cockpit inspection and electrical power up. So let's start with the pilot side and work way, our way around the cockpit going from the pilot side uh, to the overhead, to the pedestal, to the co-pilot side, etc, etc. Right, we are now in the captain's seat and we'll start with the left panel and see what we have here. Starting at the back, we have the sun visors. You might have seen this in some other videos uh, on YouTube where you can put the sun visors when you are cruising to block the sun. Uh, we have the door, the window handle and surprisingly, the window can be opened in this aircraft. You have to click here to slide the guard and unlock the window and then roll this to open the cockpit window. There you go. We have the oxygen test and oxygen supply here. Uh, we have the tiller chart light, work table light, obviously the EFB down below, some other static non-interactive objects except the tray here where the captain keeps his documents for the flight like the load sheet and the other aircraft documentation that's needed. Coming closer, let me just fix my view and get closer to the switches over here. We have the heaters for the shoulder and the footrest and we have the forward panel brightness settings here. If you leave them in the 12 o'clock position, you can control everything with the master brightness up at the overhead, which we will discuss here in a little bit. Let's bring the control column down. We have some other switches here like the nav, display control and air data. And obviously we have the, the clock 
if the aircraft options are set for the digital clock, the clock will be on the PFD. Or I'm sorry, in the um, navigation, navigation display, the ND. But this livery from Swiss Airlines comes with the analog clock and that's how it's configured. Over here we have the clock and mic button as well as the map light. There is a pen here where you can click the, the top of the pen, I don't know why. And obviously in front of us we have the PFD and ND displays, display selector knob, heading reference switch, and then the brake accumulator pressure gauge over here. We have our control column with the trim switches and autopilot disconnect and push to talk buttons, the regular Boeing yoke. And then we have accept, cancel and reject switches here with my with our warning light and warning light uh, cancellation switch up there, which is for the master warning and master caution. Moving to the side, we have our EFIS panel, our main control panel, MCP, and then the co-pilot's EFIS panel, and then some uh, selectors for our multifunction display to display different information. This is a standard layout. If you are familiar with the 737, this is pretty much same, except the autopilot switches, as far as I can tell. But I'm not going to go into the details of the MCP or the AFIS panel. We will see this in action during the flight. Down below, we have the CDUs and the multifunction display, the display brightness here. And then this is a touchpad in the real aircraft just to control the cursor. And then there are some other switches that I haven't played with. Uh, but these are related to, to, the, to the multifunction display. Right in front of us, we have the auto brake selector, gear lever, gear glide slope inhibit, uh, button and then flap override and gear override switches that are guarded and terrain override that's guarded and alternate gear switch which should be guarded and closed which will bring the gear down but i don't think this can be i think this can be used only once in the event of an uh, landing gear problem Over on the co-pilot side, co-pilot's PFD and MFD, co-pilot's EFIS panel, the clock, same switches as the captain, and the display selector switch from ECAS to MFD to NAV to PFD. For the co-pilot, we have the same inboard display selector over here for the pilot as well. And I also forgot, uh, we have the standby altimeter in the middle here. If we go to the overhead, I think it's this switch. There we go. Overhead is divided into different panels. If we start from left to right, we have the um, the IRS or ADIRU panel here. Trust symmetric computer, primary flight computers. Uh, this is what this panel is. Next panel down below is the electrical panel. Third panel we have here is the camera and left wiper control panel. Going up to the middle section we have the uh, the voice recorder and the emergency lights and window heat panel here. And then down below is the hydraulic panel. And then on, below that is the passenger signs. Going up again, oh, actually passenger signs and the external lights here. Over on this part, and then obviously the anti-ice controls here too. Going up again, oh, we have the cargo fire panel, engine mode panel. Oh, this is getting loud because we have the window open and it looks like there's an aircraft parking next to us. So let me see if, if I can close the window. 
just to avoid these external sounds interfering with uh, what we are trying to discuss here. There we go. Hopefully this will silence it just a little bit. Okay. Uh, we were at the engine mode, engine start panel here, and then fuel panel over here with the jetson and the fuel pumps. Down below is the NTIs. And then going up top again, this is air conditioning panel, and then bleed air panel, and then pressurization, and obviously the right wiper control over here. So that's the entire overhead, which leaves us with the pedestal. I think it was, well, let's just start here. Our throttle quadrant, flat lever, speed brakes, pitch trim, uh, stab, uh, guarded stab control switches or stabili stabilizer control switches, fuel levers or fuel cutoff uh, switches here, alternate flap switch, and the, the co pilot's touchpad for the multifunction display. If I go one level back, we have the radio panel for the Calm radios. We have the. Sorry about that. Audio control unit, left and right. We have the weather radar here. We have the. Um, the radio panel for the third, uh, like actually this is the third, first, second and third radios and another eight audio panel for the third pilot in the cockpit if we have one. Uh, this is the, the CDU, the third CDU we have here. Our transponder is located over here and we have the evacuation control over here floor light controls over here and that's pretty much what we have for the pedestal uh, oh it's too loud outside what is happening this is the injected traffic and then the co-pilot side we have looked at pretty much everything here uh, it's identical to the captain where you can also open the window oxygen the tray uh, it's just missing the uh, the visors but that's pretty much similar to the captain side so that's the entire cockpit layout in a nutshell uh, there are some other things over here for the uh, additional seats but we are not gonna talk about that uh, that's not relevant to what we are trying to do here today anyway that's the cockpit layout we will continue with the preliminary cockpit inspection and electrical power-up right once we are in the cockpit we will start with the electrical power-up and preliminary cockpit inspection for the electrical power-up where we need to make sure certain switches and levers are in certain positions. We'll start with the overhead panel. Our battery switch is here. We can turn the battery on and because of this being a wide by the aircraft you will not hear anything. You will hardly hear any sounds. Uh, the DC systems are powered but it's very limited and the aircraft is trying to conserve the battery power by only powering some essential systems that we need. We have external power connected to the aircraft primary and secondary. We will turn these on but before we need to ensure uh, some switches and levers are in correct positions. Namely the C1 and C2 hydraulic switches should be off and all the demand 
pump selectors should be in the off position. Windshield wild posts should be in the off position. Landing gear, if we go down, should be down. Alternate flap selector, which is uh, at the co-pilot side of the pedestal, should be off. Primary external power switch and secondary external power switch can be now turned on after verifying these. Obviously, the speed brake and flap lever are in the stop positions and the throttles are in the cutoff position. The reason we are checking the hydraulics is to make sure when we apply the electrical AC power, uh, nothing's gonna start moving that might hurt people outside working to get the aircraft prepared for the flight. All right primary and secondary electrical power is now on and the nav light switch it was already selected on so we don't have to turn the nav lights on after doing this we will also set our parking brake at this point by pressing our brake pedals to hold the brakes and setting the parking brake Now the parking brake is set and we can continue with the electrical power up. If we are in low visibility conditions in a dark environment such as night or uh, cloudy, you can also turn the logo light on. I don't think it will be necessary, it's quite bright outside today, even if it's cloudy. At Basil, by the way, that's where we are parked at. I forgot to tell you about this. We are parked at Lima Foxtrot Sierra Bravo, Basil Millhouse, Europort, and our destination will be Chicago, Kilo O Oscar Romeo Delta. Okay, so now that's pretty much the preliminary electrical power up. Uh, the pack switches, we will leave them in the off position unless we request a ground air conditioning unit to the aircraft without running the APU. That's an option, which will then carry us to the preliminary flight, pre flight procedure, which we will. Uh, end this episode here after completing the preliminary pre-flight procedure. We have the electrical power now. We can turn the adhere switch to on after it has been turned off for 30 seconds. This will engage the alignment. Emergency lights should be guarded now. And the ICAST display, when the displays are are on we need to verify these warning messages uh, let's get a little bit closer and take a look at here so first we need to hit the cancel recall button to clear all the messages and then recall to make sure we have the correct messages here and we will go over these messages to make sure these are only the expected messages that we are expecting to see during the pre-flight Nav adhere inertial, this is due to alignment not being complete. Hydraulic pressure systems left side, center and right. This is expected because our hydraulic system is turned off. Engine shutdown, obviously our engines are not running. Landing altitude, this is displayed because we our alignment is not complete yet. We have, still have seven and a half minutes. Uh, elec IFE seats and electrical cabin utilities off. This is something we can we are not expecting. And this is due to these switches being off. We can turn them on to provide power to the cabin so that the flight crew can get the cabin prepared for boarding. Back to the messages. Now those messages are gone. TCAS, obviously that's also due to the alignment. Brake source. Window heat, window heat is off. And fuel pressure, our fuel pumps are off. Uh, the brake source is our parking brake is set, but this is here because uh, 
we don't have hydraulic power to the aircraft. Clicking this once will move us to the second page, which we don't have any messages, and we can recall and make sure uh, everything is back there. Window heat, we can turn on to clear that message and get our windows start heating uh, for departure. And that completes the ECAS warning messages. So now we will go to the multifunction display and we'll check the secondary engine display to make sure we have enough oil quantity in the engines. We have 25 and 24. This becomes very relevant, especially if you select the state saving of the fluids of the aircraft because this will over go down over time and uh, you might have to refill the oil of the engines. So that's that's the engines and then we will go to the stats. I think I need to. Select it from here. Not the checklist, stats right there. Sorry about that. I was looking in the incorrect place. So now here we also check the oil quantities of the hydraulic system. It's showing 96, 95 and 99. How do we know we don't have enough? You will see an RF displayed next to the number if the oil quantity, hydraulic oil quantity is not low, which need, requires a refill. That's also, oh, we also check the oxygen here. Uh, the oxygen test is not modeled entirely. We can only check, but we cannot manipulate this selector here to do a proper oxygen check, but we will just check the oxygen system regardless. And that explains uh, or that verifies the oxygen system is working. Copilot does his side too. And then the TCAS message is something we are expecting to see because our alignment is not complete yet. One thing that we need to check here is the APU oil quantity. If the APU is not running, the way to check this is to move the switch to the on position, but do not start and then go back and check and it will display the APU oil, oil quantity here. And that's pretty much all the checks we need to do for the pre-flight. Uh, and we will just go through the checklist here in a little bit. I'm just checking to see if we have forgot anything else. Not really. Okay, so the last thing we need to do for the Preliminary pre-flight procedure is to go through the checklist. Parking brake and fuel control switches are sensed by the aircraft and already checked. We have checked the oxygen. Flight instruments, heading altimeter, we haven't set those. We need to listen to the ADIS, but we will do that during the CDU pre-flight. So I'm going to consider that complete and that completes the pre-flight checklist that will just remove the checklist and we will just go back to the engine secondary engine display page on our multifunction display all right this is pretty much the preliminary cockpit inspection electrical power up and preliminary cockpit pre-flight uh, procedure and i will be seeing you in the next episode which will be the external inspection and then CDU pre-flight. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider giving it a like. And if you stumbled upon this video and not a channel subscriber, please consider subscribing and turning on the notifications to get notified for future videos. Thanks for being here with me today and I'll be seeing you in the next video.